So let's look at acids and bases, specifically in water, and we'll look at pH and pOH, how we can use mathematically quantify the strength of the acid or the base. Because water is amphoteric, it can act as an acid or a base. Water actually can act as an acid and a base to itself, and it performs what's called the auto-ionization or self ionization, auto for self. And that's where pure water interacts with itself. One of the water molecules receives a proton, becomes H3O plus, from the other water molecules. So the water molecules are acting both as the acid and the base. And this happens all the time when water is just sitting there on in the shelf in a bottle it's doing this at, at a very tiny amount. You can kind of think about it like they're side swiping each other. They go by and one grabs the H from the other and takes off. In, at room temperature, 25 degrees, H plus is equal to the OH minus. That means that's neutral in water and both of them are 10 to the minus seven. And this is at room temperature and this number does change somewhat if we heat or cool water. We'll talk about that more when we talk about acids and bases later in AP Chem. But at room temperature, 25 C, where we usually do experiments, the H plus concentration is 10 to the minus seven. And if you look at it stoichiometrically, every time I make an H plus, I also had to make an OH minus. So this is 10 to the minus seven, and this is 10 to the minus seven. If we put those together, we have two numbers with the same base, which means when we multiply them, we add the exponents. So we get, if we multiply these two concentrations together, we get 10 to the minus 14. And that 14 is going to come back and be useful in a little bit. So in that little video clip there, you saw the water molecule come by and skim past each other, takes off the H from one to end up with H3O plus and OH minus. Just a little, I look at how that might happen in a particulate format. When we look at acids and bases, oftentimes we're talking about the pH of the solution. And most of the time we actually will talk about pH, whether something is acidic or basic. We'll talk about how to deal with bases and pH in a little bit. Because in general, we have pH probes and we have pH indicator paper. And so a lot of the time we'll get our information in terms of the hydrogen ion. pH is defined as the negative log of the H plus molarity. The square brackets, we'll see them a lot in chem, and those square brackets always mean I'm talking about molarity, moles per liter or millimoles per milliliter. So if I can just think about a very simple example here, the pH of a 0 0.001 molar solution, log base 10 here. So maybe I could try putting this into scientific notation quickly. I would move the decimal place three times. This would be 1.0 times 10 to the minus three. Well, if I want to think about the log base 10 of something that's 10 to the minus three, well, the minus log of that is just three. If I'm doing it with a calculator, then it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna turn the calculator on. I'm going to press wherever my minus key is that makes things negative. It's important that you do that. You're going to enter the log function, type in the molarity, and press enter. Now, this works for HCl in this very simple method because HCl is a strong monoprotic acid. And by definition, strong acids completely break up in water. So if I have 0 .1, 0 0.001 molar HCl, it all breaks up and I get 0 0.001 molar H. We won't worry about weak acids and bases until unit eight of AP Chem. And then we'll talk about how to use those to calculate the pH. 
of a weak acid or base solution. So for an example here, again, I'm going to use HCl, but I could use any of the monoprotic strong acids. I could use HBr, HI, nitric, perchloric, any of the strong monoprotic acids. I would know immediately that if I know the molarity of the acid, I know the molarity of the H+. So this is, again, just a matter of type in the negative, punch the log, type in 0 0.0024. And I'll go ahead and do that here on my calculator. And I get 2.61978875A, which is way, way too many significant digits. So I need to think about how I can deal with significant digits and a logarithm. And the rules for significant digits and logarithms are a little bit different. I, in fact, am going to look at the number of significant digits in my data. In this case, there are two significant digits, the two and four here. And so that is going to determine the number of decimal places in my logarithm. So this is 2.62, two decimal digits after the decimal because I have two significant digits in my data. So POH is essentially the opposite side of the coin. Since acids and bases are opposite, pH and POH are opposites. POH is really useful if I have a base, I can look at the OH concentration and use that to maneuver to the pH. P anything, including POH, is just the negative log of that quantity. So this is the negative log of the molarity. Again, the square brackets mean molarity of OH minus. So it looks just like the pH formula, only we're looking at a base. So we're looking at OH. And you remember I said that 14 was going to come back. Well, pH, the negative log of 10 to the minus 7, is 7. The OH concentration was 10 to the minus 7. So negative log of 10 to the minus 7 is 7. And 7 plus 7 is equal to 14. So that same relationship from our concentrations and our autoionization of water is how we get this equation here, which is going to let us convert from pH to pOH and vice versa. So doing this in a calculator is going to work the same way for a strong monobasic substance like NaOH, LiOH, KOH. The pOH is right from the molarity of the base because a strong base 100% dissociates in water. So all 0 0.0039 molar of this broke up and formed 0 0.0039 molar NaOH solution has a concentration of 0 0.0039 molar OH. So same idea here, I would just type in the negative, the log 0 0.0039, I get 2.40893539, way too many sig digs. So I look at my number here, I have two significant digits. So again, I will have two decimal places. I'll round this to 3.41. Two digits after the decimal because of two significant digits in the data. Now let's say I have pOH here for this solution of sodium hydroxide, but I'd like to know what the pH would be if I put a pH probe in it. That's where I am going to use this pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So pH then is equal to 14 minus pOH. I just subtract pOH from both sides. And that means that the pH is 10.59. That's because 10.59 plus 3.41 is, of course, equal to 14. So I'm going to give you some examples to look at here. I'm going to let you pause this for a second and then come back and look at your answers. Okay, so I would expect for this to be an acidic solution because it's HBr, since that's a mono 
protic strong acid, the concentration of H plus is going to be the same as the HBr. So I would just type in negative log 0 0.00029, round that to two decimal places, I get 2.3.54. POH is minus log of the OH minus. This is a monobasic strong base, 100% dissociates. So I just type in minus log of 0 0.0189. Three significant digits this time means I will have three decimal places in my answer. So this is 1.724. This is a POH. The pH of HI would have three significant digits because I have three digits here in front of my scientific notation, so three decimal places in my answer. And you might have gotten a small number here, in which case you calculated the pOH but needed to make sure and read the problem. The pH here would be 14 minus the pOH gives me 11.009. Okay, so for this much for a visual, let's think of a way that we could kind of draw this out and look at it because this is really a continuum. So I like to do this, what I like to call the big Z diagram. So I draw a big Z on the paper to help me remember that this is absolutely a continuum. Over here, I have lots and lots of H plus and only a tiny amount of OH minus. But since I'm in water, there will still be a tiny amount of OH minus because water will auto ionize. Here, I'll have a tiny bit of H plus and I'll have lots and lots of OH minus. But even when I have lots and lots of OH minus, I'll still have a little tiny bit of H plus because water is constantly auto ionizing. So along the bottom, I put the pH here, and this is helpful in remembering the relationship between pH and concentration because it's kind of backwards of what you think. The larger the pH number, the less hydrogen ions there are. So a very low pH, something at one or two, is going to be something that is very acidic and has lots of H plus because it's a negative log. Something with a very high pH has a very tiny amount of H, which means it's got lots of OH. And if we put the pH along the bottom, we could put the pOH along the top. And we see that the pOH then is the opposite, where I have a very large pOH, where I have very small pH. So a large pOH means lots of H plus and only a little tiny bit of OH minus. And a small pOH corresponds to a big pH. So I really think this helps to kind of get in your head the relationship between pH, pOH, and the concentrations. I really suggest get this drawing in your notes, get this drawing in your head. And so I just kind of draw this out as our big continuum here. I could draw, draw out all of the little H's and all of the little OH's, but things with a very low pH are strong acids. As they creep up towards seven, they're still acidic, but they are weaker and weaker and weaker. Something with a pH of seven at room temperature is neutral. Then if I go above seven, I get into the weak base area until I get out here to 11, 12, 13, 14, where I have strong bases. And so I would suggest taking this strong, weak, neutral, maybe and add it to the very bottom of your diagram along with all of the other information. So this is the relationship between acids, bases, pH, and pOH. pH is minus log of the H plus concentration. pOH is minus log of the OH concentration. And that does mean that 
there is a way to go from the ions to pH and from the pH to the ions. The opposite of a log is an exponent. So since minus log of H plus gets us pH, the inverse gets us back to H plus. So we should always remember these equations too. I like to write them on my little diagram. I like to write that pH is minus log of OH and H plus is 10 to the minus pH. And I can get to the OH minus by using 10 to the minus POH.